tend to believe that Versailles was the heaven on earth. And probably that's what the people living there were thinking. However, from nowadays perspective we know that not everything was perfect and sometimes there were pretty stinky, and I mean, literally, stuff going on out there. Today, however, we won't focus on the hygiene in the palace, that was definitely questionable, but we will look back to see what life was really like for women at Versailles. As we all know, the infamous ruler of France Louis XIV, the Sun King, decided to transform his dad's hunting lodge, in the 1670s, into a domicile more suitable for someone of his stature. So the palace of Versailles was born. Louis then moved his entire court there, and the rest is history. Living there, the aristocrats had nothing to do but get in each other's business and try to keep themselves, and the king especially, entertained. This led to an interesting experience for women in particular, who lived right in the center of political power but had none of it themselves, the rules and regulations for them were more stringent than for men, and to survive at Versailles required accepting and then mastering a very peculiar lifestyle. This is what life was really like for women at Versailles. Being royal came with tons of perks, but if you were a royal woman, that also meant your body, particularly your womb, was property of the state. What came out of it was so important, privacy wasn't even a consideration. Once a royal woman went into labor and the doctor was called, the whole of Versailles knew what was happening almost immediately. So those not important enough to be in the room when it happened waited just outside, and once the kid was born, everyone from dukes to servants to guards trooped through the royal lady's bedroom to say congrats. And if that seem a little overwhelming and you think you can avoid having your personal life invaded like this by just not getting pregnant, well, about that, when a married royal lady wasn't pregnant, the whole court spent their time talking about the regularity, consistency, and quality of her period. Versailles was a massive palace of 700 rooms and acres of gardens. And by 1789, the year of the French Revolution, it had just nine flushing toilets. Almost all of them were for the exclusive use of members of the royal family. But even getting a hold of a chamber pot when you needed one could be difficult since there were only about 300 of them and the people living in Versailles were around 10,000. So what did one do when the call of nature came? Well, they just, went. Even the women. Although women insisted on not peeing anywhere the fancy took them, they would witness men doing it constantly. It was said the king could even take a leak while driving a carriage. All this human waste everywhere meant the fanciest palace in Europe stank to high heaven, so women carrying fans, smelling salts, and bouquets of flowers was probably less about fashion than just making it through the day. When Louis XIV informed all his nobles they were moving to Versailles in the 1600s, the place was in the middle of nowhere, therefore all fancy shops of Paris were far from it. Because of this a bunch of tailors, wig makers, dressmakers, and goldsmiths soon sprang up around a new palace, ready to assist the rich people in fighting it out through fashion. And although even men had to go through a lot with their clothes, the women of Versailles had it so much worse. Their clothing, especially the most formal outfits worn during important ceremonies, was crushing, literally. Women were expected to wear a rigid whalebone corset that was so painful, it took literally days of training before they could stand the agony enough to don one in public. Skirts could be 12 feet in circumference and made of up to 30 yards of fabric. And on top of all this women were expected to do a special walk of tiny steps that made it look like they were gliding across the floor. To make matters worse when Marie Antoinette got to Versailles in the mid-1700s, she took women's fashion to a new level, at the same time that giant hairstyles came into vogue. Now ladies were also expected to get feet of height on their hair, which was achieved through pillows, hair extensions, and lots of ornamentation. What do you think? Would you be able to do this on a daily basis? Louis XIV loved the type of dance that we know today as ballet, and in 1681 he allowed women to join him in performing it for the first time. No one could be a better dancer than the king, obviously, 
but doing poorly was also not an option, and practice was required to get good enough. These amateur ballets including the ladies of the court were often performed to celebrate major events, like the birth of a king's child or the wedding of an heir. Marie Antoinette loved performing plays so much that she eventually had a whole fancy theater built so she and her friends had a permanent place to do amateur dramatics. They put on plays for years, often with the king in the audience, and were generally considered decent actors. Considering Versailles started life as a hunting lodge, it's no surprise that hunting wild animals was still a fun activity for the people there once it was transformed into a huge palace. Louis XVI in particular was obsessed with hunting, to the point it was almost an addiction. If a woman wanted to get chummy with the king, participating in a hunt was a great way to do it. Marie Antoinette sometimes went hunting with her husband, his sister Madame Elizabeth was there for the sport as well, and unlike the queen, who rode in a carriage, Elizabeth rode a horse and was decked out in the latest fashionable hunting outfit. Since wearing a skirt and riding side saddle would make hunting difficult, it was acceptable for women to wear breeches while chasing a poor animal to its death. Hunting was so much a part of life for women at Versailles that many chose to have their portraits painted as if the artist had caught them during a pursuit. Some just posed in hunting outfits while others, like Marie Antoinette, were portrayed on their horse mid-event. Women also had special guns designed for their gender and exchanged them as gifts. What do you think? Would you like to live in Versailles? Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to Fun Facts History channel and ring the bell to be notified for part 2. Thank you for watching.